Hi, John T. from JT Amplification here, bringing you the first video for the JT Amplification Alpha DI. When designing the Alpha DI, I went to this guy right here. Evil Joe Barisi. And Joe's going to take you through all the steps and sounds of the Alpha DI. I hope you enjoy. All right, so let's check out what this thing actually does. Um, I'm going to put this one aside right now, and we have one plugged in already. So. Um, this right now, these three-way switches are set to the middle position, so this DI is completely set flat, and you're going to hear just uh, me turning up the gain. So depending on, I'm just going to just super ghetto this right now, but I can actually turn the gain up hotter and turn this power amp down a little bit, and we can overdrive this stage a little bit. So that, that is sort of one way that you can kind of get some gain. I'll show you another way in a second when we're turning the minus 10 plus 4 switch in the back and, uh, and getting more mic pre-gain that way. But let's, uh, let's get into what this D, the pad does. We're very proud of the pad because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a full believer that sometimes in loud sources, obviously a lot of times in loud sources you need pads. And pads generally are, are a voodoo in the business because people talk about purity of sound but this pad is very transparent so if you play a little bit ray to kick the pad in so to me the gain is lower but the initial the tone of the instrument is still there it's not it doesn't sound murky it doesn't sound dark it doesn't sound woofy so so if you keep going i'll kick it in and out that's without the pad that's the pad in. So the DI, you'll hear the DI track and you'll hear the gain change. Okay, cool. So, all right, in the flat position, let's listen to a riff. Now I'm gonna kick in the bright switch. Cool, so we'll go flat again, and then I'll kick in the mid switch. Back to the flat position. So, this is affecting the DI sound. Yeah. The, the quarter inch out is also gonna get affected, so the amp sound's gonna change, although when an amp is set kind of dirty like this, it's not as drastic. But you'll hear this as a, um, for me, like I would normally just use the through and run it to an amp, and that would be my amp sound. So um, this DI itself, the XLR out of the back, the, the uh, low impedance out of the back, you can really tailor that DI sound to your amp sound into a track. But with us running this live right now too, we're gonna tweak, this is also gonna be tweaking the sound of the amp um, because we're coming out of this quarter inch out. So this is more like a bass amp situation or almost like you're taking the DI and reamping it as well. If you were mixing right now, we could take our DI track and uh, reamp the bass on tape or Pro Tools, whatever you got going on your DAW back into here, and we could tweak this thing into oblivion between our power section and all the controls we have on this DI. Um, we can dial in our bass amp to fit into whatever track, so you get that um, the ability to EQ after the fact as well. Um, so all right, so that is the high side, the bright and the mid. Now we'll go into the dark. Motown section and the deep. So right now this will be flat and then I'll when you play the riff again I'll kick it into the deep setting first. So what I'd like to do then right now is to, to have Ray play some bass and he's going to play a riff and I'm going to start in the, in the flat position and I'm going to kick it to the bright 
And then when the riff repeats, I'll go back to flat. When the riff repeats again, I'll go to mids. So you can hear the difference between flat, bright, flat, mid. We'll do the same thing with the low settings too. Um, so we're gonna start flat, riff repeats, I'll go to the dark setting, flat, so you can hear the difference, and then we'll go down to the deep setting. So this is flat. So essentially, you're hearing the difference between just one switch changing the EQ color, but obviously you've got nine different positions in here. So one of my personal favorites is going to the dark setting, which is going to add a little bass boost and cut some top, and then kicking in the mid grind uh, area. So that's what. So I'll, I'll literally switch it in the middle of the riff. And then my other, one of my other favorite ones is going into the deep and the bright at the same time. So I'll switch mid riff to from flat. So you can hear that low octave just come, it just blooms as soon as you hit that deep switch. And this is with a, a passive bass. We've spent a lot of time dealing with active basses as well, which is uh, it's super important. I mean, I love both, and a lot of times I'll go back and forth on a, on a track on a record between passive and active basses. So the ability to, to pad this thing, if this was an active bass right now with a lot of output, um, we could pad it down here, which will automatically reduce it and not blow up stuff. You've got a lot of control in this game pot. You know, sometimes with an active bass, you might need to turn it down a little more. Then you could also pull this V1 out, put a 12 AT7 in here, for a little less gain, make it a little more robust, or even if you're into like 70s bass disco sounds or um, you know, just super flat woundy kind of sounds, just a lot less gain, you can do it here. But also, now really quick, what I'm gonna do is, there's the minus 10 plus four, so um, I'm gonna just disconnect this amp for a quick second so we can hear the DI only. Play, play for a second. Okay, so that's flat DI right there with a little bit of gain. And I'm in the plus four setting and I'm going into this mic pre right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kick the minus 10 in, which is gonna turn it down. Right there, you've got a lot less gain. So if you're overdriving the input of your front end of your DAW, if you don't have some super high dollar converters, if you've only got like, you know, a lot of the cheaper interfaces are, are made with a ton of game because it's very impressive to plug your guitar into it and have something you know and you never know what people are going to play if they got really bad guitar cables whatever so they design the stuff to make it glorious instantly and that's that's what it should be it should be creating inspiration and and, and um so and not dealing with gear so you can turn it down here as well so i'm taking the pad out and just going to flip back and forth between the plus four and the minus ten you can see how far it's going to drop it so that's plus four So that's, that's a considerable amount of gain that you can knock down. That's knocking the output level out and we're listening to the DI. So now I'm not blowing up the front end of my Pro Tools rig or my mic pre. But if you do want to use that to your advantage to distort stuff, you could turn it in the minus 10 position, which is now going to knock it down. And I could go over there and jack the mic pre up. And now I've got, because the mic pre itself has a sweet spot. So m most people put the mic pre all the way down because everything's got such level going into it. But if you sit around and listen to where your mic pre sounds great, it's usually not at the bottom where it's starved. A lot of times you want to bring that mic pre up a little bit 
a couple of notches up and it starts getting really juicy. So if you can't get your mic pre to that juicy position because you're driving it too hard, you kick that switch in the back from plus four to minus 10, and now you've got a lot less gain going into that mic pre and you can start getting more juice out of that mic preamp. That seems like quite a lot of talking for just a direct box, but there's so many features built into this thing. Um, I think that pretty much sums up everything I'd like to say about it. And there's, I think you should really just, uh, you know, experiment. That's the one thing. It's not just a set and plug DI. You can do it that way. You can set it flat and just go for it. And there's your gain knob. Everything's cool. But there's so much more built in behind it, in front of it, and under the hood that that pretty much wraps up all the features of this DI right now. Thank you for having me show you all the features that I find awesome in the Alpha DI. I hope you dig it. I hope you like the video. And uh, if you have any questions, ask Johnny.